So before I start off, I just want to apologize in advance because yesterday, I don't know if my mom shared with everybody, I was diagnosed with pneumonia and, oh yeah, and bronchitis. I'm not contagious. I'm on antibiotics, I, but I sound awful. I have this wicked cough and it's kind of violent at times, so just <laughs> apologize in advance to my face. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Katrina Laskowski and I am a registered respiratory therapist at Allegiance Hospital. I've been a respiratory therapist for about seven years now. I love my job. I'm very blessed to have a job that I love so much. Um, I'm currently, I currently just decided to go back to school to finish my bachelor's degree, which is what I'm here doing right now. I'm in my professional speaking class. And so my professor gave us the opportunity to choose a topic that we had gone over in class and one that kind of stood out to me was the one that I'm going to be showing you today. Um, it, it just seemed very important to me, caught my eye, and so before I get into the heart of my message, um, I want you to tell me if this situation sounds familiar to you. So <laughs> have you ever been in a situation where you were working on a task, you were doing a project and you were very engrossed in that project? And then you have your spouse or your, a friend come in and they are standing beside you. They had a horrible day. They're talking to you and you're nodding, you know, that you're showing some interest, but you're not really listening to them. You just kind of hear their voice. We, I'm sure we do it all the time. So you're still, you know, focused on your task. And then all of a sudden you hear them say, so what do you think I should do? And you kind of pull away from your, your project and you try with every ounce of your being to try and think of at least one thing that they said, <laughs> but you can't. And this actually happens very often. And then they kind of tell you in a very disappointed tone, you know, were you listening to me at all? You never listen. And yes, we weren't listening. <laughs> so that is what my, my presentation is about today. You know, hearing and listening, we hear people all the time, <clears throat> but do we really listen to them? And is there a difference? <clears throat> so let's, let's kind of break this down. What is, what is hearing? So we know that hearing is one of our five senses and we, we hear all the time, but let's get into it a little bit deeper. So hearing is a very passive process meaning that it's it's automatic it just it just happens like breathing we just we just do it you know it doesn't require any effort it just happens so whether you're at home and you hear your dog chewing in the background or you hear your furnace running these are just very familiar sounds to you of things that we just kind of put off the radar um, so that's what that's what hearing is um, these are sounds that we are accustomed to, we're immune to, and even at the end of the day, after we fall asleep, you know, we still hear these sound waves coming into our, our brains, and that's why our hearing is known as our alarm system of our body. <coughs> Sorry, I'm trying so hard not to cough, but we keep, our, our brains keep most of our sounds off of the radar until something catches our attention. So if you were laying in bed and you hear a loud boom in the garage, you know, you're gonna jump up and you're gonna run and see. That is an unfamiliar sound to you as opposed to those familiar sounds, you know, the furnace running and things like that. So um, another unfamiliar sound is if, again, you were laying in bed and you hear your dog start to dry heave on your brand new carpet, you know, you're gonna jump up and caught your attention. You're gonna go see what's going on. I can't that, see. Oh, is that better? Thank you. So the difference between the two, the familiar sounds and the unfamiliar sounds, is attention. You know, you pay attention. So I want you to do something for me. I want you to tell me right now what you hear, if anything. Computers humming. Computers. Okay. So these sounds that were, yeah. Yeah, so these sounds that were just kind of in the background, we weren't really paying attention to them. When I asked you to listen, you were paying, you took the attention away from me and on to those sounds. So that's the difference between hearing and listening, is attention, that, that's the difference. So now, <coughs> I like dogs. <laughs> so what is listening? So listening 
listening as opposed to hearing is an active process. <clears throat> It requires motivation and effort. You have to put forth concentration and focus. And what I mean, like, by active process, listening is, is very complex, which we take for granted very often. So by complex, I mean, you know, like right now you are listening to me, hopefully. <laughs> um, you're paying attention to what I'm saying. You're processing the words that I'm sharing with you. You're thinking about them and then you're analyzing them. So that's what I mean by complex. All of these go into, you know, your, this is what's going on in your brain during the listening process. <clears throat> and then from analyzing, either you remember them, you know, they, they go into your memory, or you forget them. And we don't always listen at our best, which is why I found this topic to be so interesting, because we really don't. Um, whether it's our spouse, our kids, you know, our friends, we kind of lack in that department of listening. Um, you know, as the example I gave earlier with the, the multitasker, multitasking is a very, very common barrier when it comes to listening. <clears throat> so some other barriers that I wanted to share with you, uh, noises. So noises is a very common barrier when it comes to listening. And there were four in particular that I wanted to share with you. The first one is a physical noise. So these are sounds like in your environment, you know, when you heard that car go by, or if you hear loud music going on, this will take your attention away from me, the speaker, and onto those various environmental sounds. So that's what I mean by physical noise. And then you have the physiological noise. So, you know, these are sounds caused by the listener's own body, you know, when you're sitting in a super quiet room and your stomach decides to make those like whale mating sounds and you're like trying to focus on keeping your stomach quiet or me you know if I were an audience member I would be like don't cough don't cough so it would take that focus away from my speaker and onto you know my myself and then uh, the psychological noise so these are distractions caused by the listeners own internal thoughts their own dialogues you know if if you're worried about your upcoming bills that you have or upcoming deadlines you know your thoughts are focused on that internal those internal thoughts and again it takes it's a distraction it takes away from the speaker and then last we have the semantic noise <coughs> so this one was newer for me um, but this is like if I were I were to throw out a big word at you and you get fixated on that one word trying to figure out the meaning of it and then if I were to go along with my message and you were still focused on trying to find the meaning of that one word then you would lose the flow of the the presentation and you would be lost so that's what it means by you know it's that confusion that it that it causes so that's what it means by semantic noise um, mm -hmm. <laughs> huge part of our lives and most importantly where we work uh, there are actually over 360 occupations that cite listening as their number one skill and that's anywhere from teachers to respiratory therapists to doctors psychiatrists I mean so many people depend on listening as you know their number one skill so I just thought that number was huge uh, but not everybody has good listening skills you know we've all worked with someone who lacked in that department and it can be frustrating so sometimes just a, a few things about these individuals they can be uh, deemed less competent or less intelligent um, sometimes they're referred to as having like a weak attention span um, so those are one of the characteristics of ineffective listening skills uh, it can also be costly to the organization take a nurse for example who if they were given a verbal order to give a dose of medication to a patient and they weren't listening and they gave the wrong dose you know that could be detrimental to the patient it could harm them even cause death so that's what I mean by costly uh, to the organization it could lead to lawsuits terminations things like that and then last, you know, it can limit your chances of climbing the ladder. I mean, nobody wants to hire someone who, you know, lacks in that department. <coughs> so just some interesting facts that I came across. 
uh, the amount of time that we spend distracted or forgetful or preoccupied is 75% of the time when we are conversing with somebody. That's a huge number. And then the amount of time that we spend listening to other people is 45%. Less than half of the time we are really listening to somebody. And then also, you know, how much of what we are told or listen, you know, when we're listening, 20% uh, is what we remember. So everyone wants to be heard, but again, we, this is very common, we fail each other very often. So how, how can you become a better listener? So what, what can you do? What can we work on to, to sharpen our listening skills? Um, listening is, in fact, a skill, and skills get better with experience. So <clears throat> one of the things that you can do is listen. L listen fully and don't interrupt. You know, we, we like to jump to conclusions and we like to interrupt whether we're talking with friends or spouses or, or whoever it may be. We like to kind of jump in and give our own opinions. So I found this um, quote by this philosopher, and it says, We have two ears and one tongue so that we can listen, uh, listen more and talk less, which I thought was pretty significant. So listen fully and don't interrupt. Next, ask questions. You know, asking questions shows that you are engaged in the conversation, that you are actively listening. Um, it's also, like it says, questions are the breath of life for a conversation. It keeps that flow going. And then last, using nonverbal behaviors. By these, I mean, <coughs> if I were to stand up here with my arms crossed and, you know, my hip kind of out and I'm looking <coughs> elsewhere, you know, that is very closed off nonverbal behavior it's going to show that I'm not really interested in what you're saying. As opposed to having that open body language, you know, eye contact, smiling, nodding, it shows that you're engaged, you're interested in what that person is, is saying to you. And then a few others, um, encouraging the other person to talk, again, keeping that flow going. Being open to new ideas. Uh, a lot of times we are very fixated on our own opinions and we don't like to be open to new ideas because, you know, what, what I think is right kind of idea. So being open to new ideas is, is another way to be a better listener. Suspending judgment. So again, we, whether we want to admit it or not, we are a very judgmental society. Um, sometimes you can have these preconceived ideas before your speaker even opens their mouth based on appearance, based on things that you may know about the person, um, you know, prior to them, again, prior to them even opening their mouth. So suspending judgment, again, opening, you know, keeping that open mind is another way that we can work on our <coughs> listening skills. <coughs> and then making an effort to keep actively listening. So keeping that concentration, that focus on the speaker can really, really speak volumes. So as I close, I, I want you to remember, I came across um, a couple of different quotes, but there was one in particular that really tugged on my, my heartstrings um, and really just stuck with my, my mind. And this is, the greatest gift that we can give to another person is the purity of our attention. So just giving our time to somebody else can make you not only a better spouse, a better friend, but a better human being. So that's why I said that this presentation just meant so much to me because even I, from all my research and everything, I've learned so much. And I at work, you know, at home, I even was on the phone with my mom last night and she wasn't really listening to me. I'm like, mom, we just had, you just wait until tomorrow. So giving, giving your attention to that person is, it, it really is very beneficial for not only you, but as you know, to your, to your speaker as well. So thank you guys. And I did good. I didn't cough. So thank you very much for coming and being here with me today. It really, really means a lot. So thank you. Thanks, Mom. So, does anybody have any questions <clears throat> or concerns? <laughs> yeah. So, I know they always say if you repeat a person's name, that helps you remember. And I know, um, does that help 
to repeat part of the conversation, not repeat everything everybody says, but to repeat part of the conversation to yes. show them that you're listening. That goes along with the asking of the questions, you know, how to become a better listener. So by asking questions, again, or repeating, you know, like learning names, you know, by by repeating that, it, it does. It shows that you are engaged. You're, you know, you're, you're paying attention to what they're saying. So, yeah, good question. I should have, should have put that in there. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> okay, well, thank you again for being here. It really means a lot to me. So have a great day.